This is Arts Alive. I'm Linda Philippi, and my guest is Jess Anderson, who is a, a Sheridan area painter, among so many other things. So welcome. Thank you. It's, it's great to have you here. Good. I'm glad to be here. I mean, I think I first heard your name um, when you were remodeling the, the building across the street for Matt and Marilyn Warwick's, and that is a true work of art. Oh, thank you. An amazing, Well, it amazing. was an artwork. That's the way I handled it, just like it was an artwork. I had no idea at the time that you were a painter. I just assumed you were, you know, a, a craftsman <laughs> and a carpenter. I'd done everything. I, I've got my fingers in everything, and everything that I've done, I've tried to do it as absolute good as I could do it. I don't like schlock things, you know, so uh, I've been, I was on the drug team. I was I've been a contractor, I was a musician, I've, I've been an artist, I've had a commercial art business, I, I was a wholesale jewelry supply. I, <laughs> I mean, uh, we can just keep on going. You're like you Mr. Know? Haney, remember him from Green Acres? Yeah, yeah, I've been on <laughs> city council. for everybody. <laughs> I've been on city councils, I've been on planning commissions. I, oh my goodness. You know, um, yeah, I, um, I, t I taught for 17 years for Chemeketa. Did you? Um, I worked with inmates in federal and state prisons for off and on 30 years. Um, I've had... As a, as a, like an art instructor? Teaching art. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I got great stories. If we, we could spend a whole afternoon on stories on those. Well, I guess I might have to come out to your studio. Best years of my life when I was teaching is when I was teaching in the prisons. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know what? I mean, it, it's, it's true that you have so much opportunity. They have nothing but time, right? And yeah. nowhere to go but up. And I've always been a firm believer that every artist in the world is about that far from the edge. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, that's where we walk. We, mm -hmm. we don't, we're not careful. I mean, yeah. I've never been careful in my life, you know. <laughs> and you get in the prison, you find out it's just a whole bunch of guys that went over that little part there. Mm -hmm. And I know people in there that I would trust more than some of the people that's out here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the people I got a hold of in there and I worked with, I mean, of all the people that that I had in my classes, lots and lots of them got out, and within 48 hours I was on the phone with them. And I still, in fact I was just this week, I was working with one of them. Really? Um, I still do. Three of them were shown in galleries. Two of them are absolute finest tattoo artists you've ever seen. Really? None of them had ever done art. None had done any art. And I took their paintings out of there and took them into county fairs and state fairs and stuff like that and showed them in those. They took all the ribbons. Really? And it's something to watch a, an inmate that's in prison for maybe 20 years, and you walk in and he's got a little red ribbon that big and have tears coming down his face. A lot of these guys have never had an accolade in their life. Oh, my God. It's a, oh, yeah, I could tell you lots of stories on that. That's amazing. <laughs> that we, how, you, how you really were able to turn people's lives around. I have a stack of letters that deep from mothers and fathers who said, you saved my son. I can which imagine. makes me feel really good. Yeah. I had a, you know, we were, I had a commercial art business that we worked, oh man, I had seven full-time artists working for me at one time, and, and uh, we went 10, 11 hours a day, every day, and I was raised so poor that whenever we were really making the money, I couldn't get enough stuff, you know, <laughs> you just got more stuff, and mm -hmm. you got to do things, you know, and, and you could never make enough money, uh, no matter what you made, and, and uh, right in the middle of that, I had my daughter drowned. And I pulled her out of the water, and oh and uh, it changed my whole life. And it, I went for five years. I never even picked up a pencil. I mean, I closed the whole place down. I, I didn't have anything in here. Oh, Nothing. my goodness. That... And uh, from inside that prison, I had 40 homemade sympathy cards sent to me from Vacaville Prison alone. Wow. And that's a heavy-duty prison, you know. So, yeah, you, can, you can't tell me you can't reach these guys because I reached lots of them. That's incredible. Yeah. I mean, but you know, I, I think that and nobody is really irredeemable. It's just a matter of, of like you say, getting to them in the right way. There's a few that are irredeemable. Well, and, uh, yeah. Um, Charlie Manson wanted in my I, class. I, you know what? I was exactly just thinking his name popped into my yeah, head. Yeah, he wanted in my class real bad down in Vacaville. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Charlie's a little, ah, he's a 
work of art himself. He's only about this tall. I know he's like five you know, two or something, and, right? And he practiced that evil look in, him, in the mirror. You know, he liked that notoriety that he had. And uh, he, I, he, I said, well, let's go up and look at some of your work because I just want anybody in there because you get a bad apple in there, you can ruin the whole class. You mm -hmm. know. And so we went up to his cell and looked at his stuff, and it's all blood and guts, and you know. And I said, Charlie, you're not painting that stuff in my class. He said, I'll paint anything I want. And I said, you won't paint it in my class. And he said, I already told you. And I said, you're not in. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. but, this, this is a juried class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you, um, that class took everything real. I made him be real serious. When I walked into the classes, each time I did a class with a new group. I said, okay, close the door. It's just you and me. I didn't get any of you in here. I can't get any of you out of here. Mm -hmm. I got a certain amount of rules that I have to follow and I'll bend them every way I can bend them to make it a coolest class you ever was in. If you're in here to get out of a job, I want you just to get up and get out right now. I don't want you in my class. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn how to do art, I'll teach you everything I got. But the number one rule, number one, don't you ever treat me like staff. And I'll never ever treat you like an inmate. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. Person to person. I never judged any of them, mm -hmm. none of them. And I mean, I had some pretty tough guys. Down in Vacaville, we figured up one time in my class, they'd murdered 38 people. Oh my heavens. Just my class. My class. How, many, how many people were in the class? Six? Uh, there was about uh, 20. Okay. My son learned how to walk between these guys' fingers. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, we had, uh, we had some pretty tough guys, but I'm telling you what, I've got art at my house from these guys that send me their art and stuff. You know, you should see the art. It'd knock your socks off. That's incredible. Yeah. What, what, I mean, you know, when you, you, people will wonder, what's the purpose of my life? What am I supposed to be doing? Well, you know, I think you're a person who knows, knows what they're supposed to be I've, doing. I've made it all the way through my life that I wanted to do what I wanted to do, mm -hmm. and I wanted to do it well. And when I was teaching those guys in the inmate, in the prison there, I knew exactly that was where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you, you like you really felt like you were in the groove. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. And boy, it was, it was from here to here. I mean, there was no ifs ands buts about it. It was so bad at Yamiel County Fair. Uh, I was bringing the guys in to go to the fair there, and uh, they took every ribbon for every time we brought them in. So they wanted to have a separate group. So inmate art wasn't put with the rest of them, they had to be a separate group so mm -hmm. that somebody else could get a ribbon. <laughs> it's time for somebody else to win a And prize. they said, well, you know, they have all this time and all that, everything. Let me tell you something. It's not what you think. Like in the federal prison, you're allowed to move once every hour. And if you're outside the, of the doors, whenever that door closes, you got 15 minutes to move. You go to the hole. If you run out of white paint, you have to order it through their PX. I call it a PX. Mm -hmm. It may take two months to get a tube of white paint in. Oh, wow. How do you paint without white? You know, any tube, anything. It just takes forever to get that stuff. They don't have it as easy as you think. It's and, an exercise in patience. Oh, yeah, very much. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it changes them so much. You know, I walked into my class one day, and all the guys are in a group. Now, you don't want that. So I came in and I said, hey, come on. What, what's going on? So everybody parted waves. Got this big guy is a skinhead has more tattoos on him than you got skin on you you know oh. all over, and he's holding a lunar moth on his finger it's about <laughs> that wide and it had just hatched out and they found it outside and they were all sitting there discussing how they would mix the colors to paint that isn't that interesting wow you know that's now tell me that's you know that's not gang talk no it's not at all it's and i said well you know we got to go we got to go back to the class so I said I'm gonna and one of the kids says well should we stick a pin through it and, and uh, save it for later and this big guy says and kill it <laughs> oh he was ready to fight <laughs> so I took it outside and I put it on a limb of the tree right outside mm -hmm. of our window and I came back inside and everybody looked at it and a bird flew down there and grabbed it and flew off <laughs> Well, there you go. But that was nature, you know. Yeah. But he wasn't going to let that kid kill that thing. There oh was no my gosh, way. that's amazing! What a great story. Oh, I got lots of them. <laughs> so you brought some work in today. To, yes. And do you want to talk a little bit about what you what well, you got here? Well, this place here is uh, is Snoqualmie Falls, mm -hmm. and it's up by my son's house, not too far out of Seattle there. And there's uh, like a million and a half people 
come there every year. These peregrine falcons nest all in there, and they come to see the falcons in that falls. And now the Indians have bought all this, and sitting right here is a huge, big motel. <laughs> Naturally. And so everybody comes there can stay in that motel mm -hmm. and stuff, you know. But when I'm up there, when I see things like this, it just makes me want to paint it so bad. Oh, and yeah. So I had one of my photographers that uh, takes a lot of pictures for me give me give me some good pictures of the peregrines I couldn't get them close enough I got a 600 millimeter lens but I couldn't get them up there when I wanted them you know yeah so I know I've seen those telephoto lenses that go like from me to you they're yeah, huge well, I, when I was up shooting pictures of the foxes coming out I had the 600 on there and I thought man I am just I am the big guy in the bunch well all these professional guys that shoot for you know the big magazines. Like National Geographic. They were or there. Yeah, a bunch of the Geographic photographers. Mm -hmm. Their lenses were like this big and about that big around. Wow. And I, I looked at mine and looked at theirs and I thought I, it was like I had a 22 at a Howitzer convention. You know. You had lens envy. <laughs> But the thing about it was, is the foxes came up so close to me, I had to pull that off and shoot with a little lens because it was so close that. If I was to put the lens on them, all I could get would be an eye. Yeah, incredible. That's amazing. <laughs> See, there's more than one way to get a photo, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do, do you particularly love birds, or is it all wildlife? Oh, no, I do all kinds of wildlife. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Africa and spent three weeks in Africa, in Kenya, and I had my son with me also. And when we came home, we had 15,000 digital photos. Oh, my heavens. Is and, that where you got the picture, this one? No, I raised tropical birds for oh, lots of years. At okay. one time... I raised all kinds of parrots and cock. I sold over a thousand cocktail babies alone, hand feeding every baby. Oh my goodness! And uh, I had lots of the parakeets, and that painting right there, I had sold to a lady in New Zealand, and the country would let me ship it over. Really? Why? They said they wouldn't let me ship anything that was more than three hundred dollars. Interesting. And I don't know why, because my friend over there, he gets. Fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars for his, and he can ship to us. Yeah, right. Of course. You know, well, interesting. So I had to ship her money back to her, mm -hmm. and uh, she was really disappointed. And say, if you're ever that. in America, we can send it yeah. home with you. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, just tell me how people can find your work. Well, I have a website that's www.jessanderson.com. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm on Instagram. Um, if they email me, it's Jess and Cheryl at hotmail.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a list that people who want on my list, I send out every time I finish a painting, I take about 15 or 16 step pictures as I'm painting it and explain how I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. So they'll get that from the pencil drawing all the way down to the finished painting. Oh, wow. okay. And that goes out every single time that I finish a painting. And that list goes all over the world. You know, this is interesting when you say that, because I know that there's another artist who does that, and I've seen his work, and he puts it like up on Facebook or Instagram, and he says, oh, here's a concept I'm working on. And then he'll, he'll show you kind of the steps in process. I never heard who, of that. Who is that? Gary you know? Bueller uh, I don't in New Bern. Don't know him. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I've been doing this for years. And uh, what I, I started doing it because I wanted one day to do my own how to paint book. Oh, okay. And I may end up still doing that. Well, what, what, what's that guy's name? Bob Ross. You could be the next Bob Ross. You know, and <laughs> Bob Ross never painted a painting I would ever hang in my well, house. I know that. But, but I have so much respect for him. But he's great. Well, you know, he took over from Alexander, you know, whenever mm -hmm. Alexander was in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bob Ross never made any money at it at all. He did almost all that for nothing. <laughs> And there's Bless a big little art. there's a big warehouse that still has all the paintings that he painted <laughs> in it. I mean, uh, but he got people painting he just did. for fun. You know what? And see, this is the thing. This, this is why I love a guy like him. I have to actually tell you, uh, he's he's no longer with us, right? Right. Uh, my my son puts that on so, to put his daughter to sleep. You know, Bob Ross. Oh, a happy tree, and there she's. Let's do a happy little road. Right, <laughs> but so that so that's primarily then how you're selling things these days is is through your. And you know that hair he had, he became an icon. Of that he hated it. <laughs> he hated it. He said he hated it so bad, but it was that was you could look a silhouette and you knew who it was. So he, he was never allowed to cut it. Oh my gosh, that's just absolutely crazy! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, you know, I hate to say it, but we're really out of time, Jess. All right. So thank you so much for being here. And yeah. my guest, well, I'll tell I you. want you to come back. I, I uh, will tell you that 
uh, people, a lot of people are talking about how things are so down right now. Last year was the biggest year I've ever had in art. And it's a, it's amazing. my major paintings like these, were, which were selling anywhere from $1,500 to $3,200 in that area, uh, I sold 28 major paintings wow. last year. good for you. And they went to lots and lots of different states. Uh, they went to Canada, a bunch of them in Canada. I did um, commissions out of Canada. I mean, there was just a lot of stuff. So you don't want to give up. Everywhere but New Zealand. Don't give up because, <laughs> you know, the market's still out there. Oh, sure. But you have to go after it. It doesn't mm -hmm. come to you anymore. Yeah. It doesn't come to you. Well, thank you very, very much. And My pleasure. It's been an absolute joy. <laughs> thank you. You bet.